All right, guys, welcome back. So we're back again on the Hellstang project, and today we're going to be finishing up the cylinder head install. So I finally got in the mail uh, my Speedmaster push rods. So today we've already got uh, all this stuff bolted down. All we've got to do now is just take our rockers, put in all of our uh, um, push rods, and torque it all down, get it all good to go. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. All right, so here are the push rods that we got for this motor. Again, these are from uh, Speedmaster. And so these, uh, I think, are the same guys that did the cylinder heads. I can't remember if they used to be Pro Comp and now it's Speedmaster. But anyway, 6.30 is what you know ended up working for this application with these uh, old Pro Comp heads, um, Anderson cam, and you know stock bottom end, right? It's never been decked or anything like that. And so it's part number 1-254-003. So let's pop these bad boys out. And I just want to kind of do a quick measurement um, against the ones that we have. So they say right on there, 6.300, 5 sixteenths push rods. So here's our little push rod checker tool, the one that we use from Comp Cams. And let's just do kind of a side-by-side. -side. Hopefully it's close. Perfect. Yeah looks spot on beautiful cool all right then so that should be good to go um i'm gonna go ahead and start dropping these in i'll probably take a little bit of oil maybe dab some oil on the ends i guess uh same for the roller rockers um i might just kind of take some oil put some oil on the roller maybe some oil around all the contact surfaces. I did go through and kind of preemptively, I got all the rockers ready to go on. I just kind of made sure that uh, this portion here is facing up in the right way. Um, that way I don't put it on, screw it up accidentally. And uh, I need to go through actually still, and I'm just gonna go ahead and back out uh, the little Allen head on all these uh, nuts. That way when I go to tighten them, it's not interfering. Just that way I can breeze right through this thing once we get it all set up and start rocking. So let's do it. All right, so now we got this stuff ready to go. I'm gonna start setting these all in here. Um, so I think all I'm gonna do, I mean, these things seem okay, but I'm just going, they already seem like they got oil kind of on this part and stuff, but uh, I don't wanna make a huge mess. So I'm just, I got a little paintbrush here. I'm just gonna, I don't know, paint a little bit of oil on the roller, paint it on the back here, just where the uh, push rod's gonna go. Just, you know, make sure it's oiled up and just go ahead and set these all in place. Just kind of go around the motor, do them all, and then we'll start out at the number one cylinder and then kind of work our way all the way around. All right, next thing I'm going to do now is uh, start over here with the number one cylinder. So with Ford, uh, from what I just saw, the firing order just goes one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to go in that order for um, getting these things all tightened down. I don't know if that even matters, but you know, I know we want to start with the number one cylinder. And uh, we'll go ahead, we'll start with, uh, with doing the intake valve and get that knocked out, spin it around, downtown Charlie Brown, all that good stuff. And for tools, all I'm using is a 13 16 uh, hex. That's going to be to tighten down our, our little uh, nuts here. Can't even think of what these things are called. And then uh, 16 millimeters. So again, this might be different if you're using, you know, I'm using comp cams, uh, rockers and stuff. So if you're using a different brand, maybe it's different. Uh, and then also a 16 millimeter wrench just to be able to hold this uh, while I'm actually putting the final torque on here. And for torque, I think we're just doing... We got about what, 22 foot pounds, 21 foot pounds or so. So uh, that's going to be all the tightening torque. And uh, once we get um, once we get zero lash on the uh, push rod, we're just going to go uh, half turn past zero lash. And then that's when we tighten our little uh, guy here. And you know, it's pretty easy. So let me go ahead and show you. 
All right, so to do the, um, to, to be able to actually, you know, set the lash and all that stuff, we need to get the intake valve that we're going to work on first. We need to get it on the base circle of the camshaft. And the way that CompCam says to do it is to spin the engine over until we see the exhaust push rod just starting to come up. And then we know, and then we stop. And then we know that, that uh, it's going to be on the base circle of the cam. So our engine just goes clockwise. And we're just going to keep going around until we see that bad boy start to lift. Which is right there. So that should be good. Now we can go ahead and take our little uh, lock or nut thingamajiggy. And we're just getting this thing down all the way down just until there's no more... Um, Basically, until there's no more movement. Um, you can do the spin method where you feel the drag. What I was doing last time, I kind of like doing the up and down. So kind of go up and down until it can't. And that's about the point where that bad boy is seated. You also do want to make sure that it's uh, um, you know, properly aligned. Make sure it's straight. But yeah, that's about it right there. So now you just take it, you hit it with a half turn. Boom, half turn, done. Then you can go ahead and torque that bad boy down. Oh, helps if your tool's the right way. All right, that's all there is to it. Now the exhaust valve is a little bit different because what comp wants you to do on the exhaust, uh, you're going to be looking, of course, at the push rod for the intake. But basically for this one, we want to have our push rod go all the way up and then come down between half and two thirds, completely down. And that's where you stop. So a little bit different. So we're gonna, right now our exhaust is going up. He's going back down. Now our intake's about to come up. So we're going to let that guy go all the way up and get about halfway down right there. Perfect. Now we know that exhaust is on the base circle of the cam and we're just going to go ahead and repeat the exact same procedure. So again, make sure it's straight, make sure, you know, our push rods good to go on both sides. Take out the lash and do it again uh, 15 more times, you know, fun stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, knock it out. All right, so I'm going to get close in just to show you guys the movement of the, uh, the lifters and stuff. That way you can get an idea. So on this side, it's actually um, opposite, right? So this is the uh, exhaust. This is the intake versus this is the intake. This is the exhaust, right? Just because the heads are switched. So, so right now we're uh, going to be going ahead, tightening the intake. So we're going to look at the exhaust. And again, as soon as this starts to come up, that's when we stop. Go back in time a little bit here. It's getting harder now with all the uh, everything getting tightened down. The springs want to push it. Okay, there it is, starting to lift. Just tighten our own down. All right, now we're going to go ahead, we're going to get this uh, exhaust tightened down, so watch that one. So now we're going to look for the intake to go up and then come back down three quarters of the way. So there's the intake all the way up. And it's about half, half to two thirds is what uh, comp calls for. And then now we can just tighten this bad boy down.
All right, guys, we did it. So we got these babies all bolted down, looking good. Let's do a few rotations here real quick. Check it out. Look at that, baby. Valves opening and closing. Stuff's happening. Finally, this part's done. So I'm not gonna put on the valve covers yet permanently because we still need to get some uh, LS coils or you know some GM like LS type coils. Doesn't matter if it's from a truck or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna need to get a, a set of those and then we're gonna have, probably have to modify the valve cover. I do wanna just sit the LS coils on top of the valve cover, run like GM, just you know regular uh, ignition wires, all that good stuff. I don't wanna like put them back on the, um, firewall, you know, I don't want to relocate them. I just want to have them right there, easy to access, easy, easy to service. So let me go ahead and give you guys just a little sneak peek to what it'll all look like together. All right, so here she is all together. I mean, of course, the intake, it's just sitting on here, same as the valve covers. It's not all bolted and torqued down because when I drop this thing back into the car, I don't plan to have the high ram on there. We'll just, we'll sit that on in the car. Um, you know, I want this thing to just be kind of as small as possible, just be able to get it back in. But we are still a while away from dropping this thing back into the Mustang. Uh, once we get, you know, this is pretty much finalized now. Uh, next big step will be we need to uh, get the subframe, the front, or sorry, the K member, uh, the front K member out of this Mustang, drop the suspension, all that stuff. I do have a new racecraft uh, K member that's going to go into this thing along with some coilovers. And then I just want to do some tidying up, some cleaning up of the engine bay. And I need to get that wire harness that goes into the car, into the factory computer. I need, I do need to finish getting that out of there because uh, I've got to send that out to uh, get the whole harness modified for the gauges and all that stuff. Um, that way when my Holly Terminator harness and everything comes in then we can you know get that all routed start routing it figuring it all out so uh so we're making some good progress uh the very next thing we're going to do though is i've got to start to modify the brackets so look for the front you know engine brackets with the uh, ac and the alternator uh, i want to modify those a little bit get them powder coated make them looking good and then we can get those bolted on and then we'll start mocking up all the turbo stuff let's just make sure all that stuff fits and speaking of turbo stuff let me show you guys this all right, so as you guys have seen previously, I already have a turbo kit that I picked up for this thing, an on three kit that's for Fox body. And I was just planning at the time, I got a good deal on it. I figured, hey, if I have to chop some stuff up to make it work, that's what we'll do. But uh, over the weekend, I ended up finding locally a kid was selling uh, an on three turbo kit for the 94, 95 Mustang, uh, which is freaking awesome because they are a little bit different as far as the manifolds go, um, which I'll, I'll probably end up bolting those on kind of showing you guys the differences, but this should allow us to keep the AC, all that good stuff without having to hopefully change a whole lot. Now, usually these kit kits uh, aren't, you know, usually they're not perfect. Um, this one was already ran. So I'm hoping that whatever issues there were with fitment, they already figured it out. The other thing I didn't have is I didn't have any of the uh, downpipe or this uh, midpipe piece. So that was gonna be something I would have had to fa fab up additionally. So now I won't have to do that. I can just use this piece plus the downpipe. Um, so that's freaking awesome. And it's also a little bit bigger turbo. So my other uh, kit just has a 70 millimeter and this one's got the bigger, I think it's a 78 millimeter. Urgh! So not a whole lot bigger, but so. Yeah, so it should be a little bit better turbo and uh, make a little bit more HPs for the same amount of boost. So that should be awesome. So again, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Take care.